Well, I know it's some sad news. Uh, number one, uh, Marion Barber uh, passed away. I think they found him in, in his apartment. Yep. Uh, they said that uh, they were checking on a welfare uh, thing that was going on, and they found him in his apartment. You know, some sad news. Uh, a lot of people were frustrated with Mike Fisher because uh, he showed the mugshot of Marion Barber uh, with his playing days. Um. I don't know what to think about that. I'm going to just say this from my perspective. Um, I heard when I heard about Marion Barber and I seen that mugshot, uh, how he had help fell on hard times. I was immediately something in my spirit. And this is on my son, something immediately in my spirit didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't like seeing that mugshot because it, it, it did something to me. DDP. I'm not going to lie. That mugshot did something to me because it made me feel like he wasn't there. When I seen the mugshot, it looked like he was not there. Um, about, like, the look in his eyes or something. Yeah. The look, yeah. it just looked like there was a lot of things going on. And I just didn't like the feeling mm -hmm. down the road. Yeah. Um, and we, we saw Marion Barber. We saw how hard he played. And, you know, me and you were talking about this off air, and I'm just going to bring this up right now. Um, you know, I, I, I am not going to lie, DDP. I, the CTE thing, mm -hmm. I have my doubts about it at times uh, because when something goes down with the NFL player, that's the first thing they want to throw out there. And I'm like, mm, we don't know if that was that. Was that. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I hear it a lot. But in this particular case, with Marion Barber, I feel like this was an issue. Yeah. I feel like the way he played the game of football, I played football, and he, you, you feel those shots to the head. When you leave with your helmet and you hit somebody, you do feel that. It, it, it's something going on there. Mm -hmm. And we saw how Marion Barber played. He played, they called him Marion the Barbarian. Yep. That's the way he played. He took a lot of head shots. Yep. He yep. put his head down. Yeah, he and was I, I, uh, probably one of the best short yardage running backs I can remember. Um, he was a barbarian. Yeah, I mean, just absolutely physical. Took physical. All of the punishment was yes. incredibly difficult to bring down. Yes. And, uh, you know, he played before the the rule where you couldn't lower your crown as the runner. Yes. And yes. so he used his head as a battering ram a lot. Yes. So, yeah, I, I don't have any questions or doubts there that CTE was definitely a factor for him. Um, his best seasons, 2006, he had 14 rushing touchdowns. He wasn't even mm -hmm. the starter yet. Still right. Julius Jones. Yes. He had 14 touchdowns. He had a stretch where over the course of a year, despite being the backup, he had like 24 touchdowns. That's ridiculous. Uh, his best, from a yardage perspective, his best season was 2007. He had about 945 yards, I want to say. He never had a 1,000-yard th uh, season, but. He got close that one year, which was the year they sent like 15 and he Cowboys see, to the right, Pro Bowl. Right, right. Yeah. He made the Pro Bowl. Yep. Um, and he was a dog that year. Yep. Yeah. He he was, I think, really what made that offense work. It wasn't mm -hmm. just the weapons they had with Terrell Owens and Jason mm -hmm. Witten in his prime. It was they had the running game because they had Marion Barber. And he had a stretch there where he was a top five running back. It, it might have only been a couple of years, but I feel like he was in that conversation. And uh I mean, if nothing else, just from the total thing he brought, like because of how good he was in short yardage, he was a menace in red red zone opportunities, and that's what made the whole thing click for the Cowboys. So, yeah, it's uh, it's heartbreaking, honestly. Like you said, you see the picture there, and you can tell it's just someone who really struggled with a lot and gone through a lot. Mm -hmm. There's just something in the eye that's just looks broken, and you know, you saw Dez talking about this even like a year ago. You know, he was already kind of almost pre-morning seeing that something's not right and yep. worried that he's not going to be able to help draw him back. Yep. That's what it sounds like happened because, yeah, wellness check. And uh, he was 10 days shy of his 39th. That's, uh, that's yeah, man. really, really tough. This is one of the ones that hits me pretty hard. Like, I'm, you know, I'm a younger I mean, a younger Cowboy fan, but, like, in general, like I started really following the team, like, religiously, essentially, 
2002, 2003. So barring Marion came on the scene, I think 2000, uh, 2004, 2005, something like that. So, I mean, he's very early on there, and he was like the first running back, the Cowboys, most Emmett, that I was just like, dude, they've got a got the guy as far as the running game is concerned. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a shame. Health is a major thing, and obviously CTE will get all that confirmed, but I really sounds from everything we've heard in the last couple of years, it sounds like health was really bad, and I'm sure CTE case played a big part in that. And all the more reason you got to take care of these guys even after they retire. Because you know the Cowboys, they if they're, if they're aware of something, they're doing everything they can. That's one thing. As much as we criticize the Joneses, they are actually really good at trying to help guys who have played for them, whether they still play for them or played for them before. They have a really good track record of trying to help. They were still helping Josh Brent like three years after he wasn't on the team anymore. Yeah. Hey, uh, try, man. Like sometimes, uh, sometimes you just can't overcome your demons. Sometimes you just can't over your overcome your demons, and like you said, this one—I mean, this one hits home hard home to me. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, DDP. When you sent me the text and you said we got to talk about Marion Barber, I was somewhere else. And as soon as you said we got to talk about Marion Barber, you saw the text I sent you right after that. Yep. Is he gone? Because that's what I felt. Like I already knew. As soon as you said Marion Barber, that's the next thing I knew because I just didn't feel it was right after that. After I seen that picture, I just felt like it wasn't right. I mean, he was living in an apartment. You played in the NFL. You live, yeah. and I, I'm not being disrespectful. I'm gonna say this, but you play in the NFL, you live in an apartment. You know what I mean? He was it just fell on some a lot of tough times. And man, I love Marion Barber, man. Like I think when we when this is gonna hit home to a lot of people because Marion Barber was a fan favorite. Mm-hmm. Every I don't know. Anybody that sit there and say they they didn't love watching Marion Barber play? Shit, his most popular highlight is the two was that New England, New England, that damn New England. It's pushed back like twenty yards into the end zone. Not 20, everybody like loves the end zone. Marion breaks like six tackles and gains two yards on the play. Yeah, yep. Everybody yeah. loved Marion the Barbarian. So I think uh, the initial beginning of it. I think the more morning will start happening like tomorrow and mm-hmm. the day after. Uh, because like I said, I feel like, you know, everybody loved Marion Barber because I feel like he was the quintessential, like the, the hard hat guy. And I think that's why people could relate to him because he brought his lunch pail and just went to work and he went all out. And that was the attitude. He, he had the attitude that, you know, when we talk about the toughness, uh, DDP, where you talk about the San Francisco game where Dallas just got beat up and there was the toughness. There was nothing that yeah. we were worried. About. You didn't have that with Marion Barber. Right. Marion Barber brought that. You would not see a game. If Marion Barber played in that game against San Francisco, right? Mm-hmm. And he got a three-yard run, right? Yep. What's Marion Barber doing? He getting up stomping, shaking his head. He getting everybody hyped up. He getting everybody crazy. Now yep. everybody feeling good because you fed off Marion. And I and that toughness is what he brought to the Cowboys, and uh, I think that's the biggest thing that's going to stand out in my mind about Marion Barber is his toughness. He brought that toughness to the Cowboys that they were lacking. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you saw Demarco Murray in his best, his last season with the Cowboys, his best year of his career, uh, especially late in the season. All those what they called them dirty yards that he was getting, where he was getting these carries for two and three yards maybe or one yard zero yards but getting back to the line like all these things like they talked about how that just beat the crap out of him and how much of a toll that took that was that was marion's entire diet but that at was the same his game but at the same time he would do that and after doing that over the course of the game he'd get to the fourth quarter and suddenly he's starting to gash you he's worn you down because he broke your will mm-hmm. he was the guy delivering the shots he was never the guy getting hit it felt like and yep. unfortunately in the that's problem but yeah it got to uh it definitely endeared him to the fans because yeah he did have that lunch um vibe and kind of aesthetic to him for sure and it just felt like a no-nonsense kind of guy have the flashiness have the gimmicks uh no no disrespect to like zeke but he didn't do like the feed me thing or whatever like he might have stomped his feet but he just literally 
just went out there and handled his business. Because he ran over somebody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He just did his business. He did his thing. And yep. it's uh it's definitely a great loss for fans here and Cowboys organization. I know they put out a statement. I can find it. Uh yeah. So I got it here. I said, we are heartbroken by the tragic death of Marion Barber III. Marion was an old-school, hard-nosed football player who ran with a will to win every down. He had a... Sorry. Uh, he had a passion for the game and his love for his coaches and team. Our hearts go out to Marion's family and friends during this difficult... Yeah. Uh, that, that pretty much encapsulates it there. That's old school, wanted to beat you down and win the battle of wills every single down. Didn't matter what was happening in that play. Definitely, uh, definitely a hard one. Yeah, I mean, and guess what? Even I think Mike Fisher uh, tweet is <laughs> crazy. He tweeted, remember I told you how he had the picture with mm -hmm. uh, his uh, mugshot and yeah. his a lot of people were complaining about it, and it was deleted. Should be. I mean, that's not the time to post that. That's not what the story is here. Like, people say, like, hey, you don't speak ill of the dead, especially the newly, in this case, mm -hmm. like, bad taste. And, like, yeah, that's not the time to post that photo. There's, it's so easy to find a photo of him as an active player, especially in the Like, you're reporting this from a Cowboys perspective? Then mm -hmm. post a photo of him as a Cowboy. Don't post a photo of him that's like, well, in the past couple of years, this is the most noteworthy thing that's happened to him. That's not what we're talking about. No one's going to look and reflect at that time. If you want to have that conversation, that's a later conversation. And if anything, it's to be approached not with reproach, not with judgment, but with like empathy and kindness. Right. Like looking at it and saying, like, it's tragic that he got to this. Place. Let's look at what got him to this place, not put it out there to paint a certain picture or give an impression of who he was as a person. Yeah, you're right, because uh, that's what it what it does is when you see that last picture of him, mm -hmm. you're going to think negative things. You're going to think, oh, he was messed up. He was this. And you he won't was have that. empathy. And you won't, just like you said, you won't have any empathy for his life. And you'll just think, yeah, that was just another NFL player doing dumb stuff. Yep. That's what it will look like. And uh, I agree with you 100% DDP. And I feel like that's why that article was taken down, because a lot of people are like, how, how are you going to do something like that? He is re, re, re he is revered yep. with Dallas Cowboys. You're gonna have a lasting picture of him having a mugshot, right? Yeah, not not a good look. I wasn't aware of that until you said it, but uh, I'm glad it at least got rectified. Honestly, mm -hmm. if anything, he should put out some kind of acknowledgement, or if not apology, at least a retraction, not just delete the post or. The post. Right. But yep. That's a that's a different thing, and I guess you can't always ask for uh, the right thing in some. Right. 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 Yeah, man. Well, hey, you know what? It was a great another session today. Um, really love talking about those Mavericks. We got two of some OTAs with the Cowboys. Some sad news. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we're going to continue to move past that. Uh, but Positively Relentless, another series in the books. And we're going to be hitting again next week because we're going to get more Cowboys football because we're jumping deep in those OTAs. Mini camps is right around the corner, mandatory mini camps. And then we're going to talk about these Dallas Mavericks because the draft is right around the corner. And we'll talk about what they're going to do on this offseason. Yep. So for myself, Big Game James, DDP, Positively Relentless, we're going to be talking to you soon. We out. Peace. Peace.